All right, guys, so you guys always want to know about the importance of soil testing and how it can help you improve your decision when it comes to applying products to your lawn. Well, today is a very, very special day. We have Alan Hain Lawn Care Nut and Chris Borgman from MySoil all together. And we're going to run through some soil test data and you know, hopefully you guys will get some great value out of it and help you in see the importance of incorporating soil testing into a lot of your programs. So let's see if I can bring everyone on here. And we got Chris, Alan, how's it going, guys? Good, good to see you guys. Great, great to be on. Very, very nice, awesome. Awesome, Chris, so um, so I guess, you know, Alan's, Alan's here, I mean, you, it's kind of free form. As far as, um, you know, just MySoil, I guess, tell, tell us a little bit more about, you know, the MySoil testing, like what makes it different from traditional soil testing and why, you know, someone that's a, a DIYer should consider it for their lawn care program. Yeah, I mean, uh, really we use a, a little bit dist different testing method than the conventional methods of, of soil testing and, um, the reason we do that is we feel that this platform is uh, a very accurate representation of what, you know, plants are going to see in the field, you know, during that season and really helps us guide, you know, in season management decisions, as well as some long term decisions and uh, you know, a little bit different than that traditional test. You know, we feel that the resin technology really just takes into account all of these parameters, you know, that we really went to college to learn about soil and soil testing and, and all those interactions that take place that really affect the availability of nutrients to a plant. And it really takes all of the, that information and combines it into one and then allows us to take our agronomy expertise, our knowledge of products, soil amendments, and really put that all together. And really, you know, a perfect representation of this platform um, and how it really properly guides fertilizer selection and application. And, you know, working with Alan and also Ron, you know, over the last, you know, year with Ron and I guess Alan for, you know, it's been almost four years or so since we started working with Alan a little bit and we feel that we've just developed the perfect platform to help the DIY community uh, provide them data and really guide them to the right products and you know applications of those products. I got you. So Alan you have access to work on you know or you could have went with with anything as far as uh, you know soil testing technology to incorporate it and associate with your brand. Why um, why my soul? Like what what about it that did you find attractive that that made you want to you know bring this one to the, to the DIY community? Yeah, a couple things. The first one is it's approachable. So traditional soil tests, while they're awesome, they require some extra math to be done. There's some extra information uh, that you need to have behind the scenes in order to really understand what's going on with your soil. And the thing about it is when a DIYer, a lot of DIYers, when they get their soil test back, it's already a lot of data. And sometimes people look at that as a grade and they take it personally like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. I'm being graded. And so I wanted something that was much more simple, something that just gave them the data and said, now go out and work on this. Uh, so that was the first reason why. And the other thing is it's more real time. I mean, we're DIYers. We're not somebody that's working on uh, a golf course for 25 years and, and things like that. We're a DIYer. I need to know what I can do today to make change. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and then thirdly, these guys offered a technology for me that we would be able to incorporate this into our app, which we've now done, because the idea for me is, is to get this into the app so that it begins to inform the program in the app so then people can plug and play on our app. And we actually are making strides that way. And these guys have done a ton to support us that way on the back end, making their technology available to us through APIs and things like that so that we can import the data for each customer. Very cool. So this is so you can actually get the MySoil testing data within the Yard Mastery app. Is that that's a thing now? Well, it's for the Yard Mastery branded test right now. Gotcha. So okay. MySoil white labels our test. So now if you have one of our tests, yes, in the app, you can go in the side rail or under the hamburger menu and you can import all of your soil data. Very, very cool. Yeah, so for me, when I, you know, got into soil testing, it just made sense to me. Like, so my my better half is um, in medicine, right? And, you know, it just, she always talks about studies and the importance of being able to do analysis in the decision making as far as like how to best to treat a patient. And, you know, again, I'm, I don't necessarily have a formal background in agronomy. I mean, I'm, I'm a tech guy for, you know, by, by trade, but it just made sense to me that before I go just applying things to my lawn, which is what I used to do for years, just to, you know, throw it down and pray, um, it made sense at some point to actually begin testing and seeing, you know, what what really comes out of it. Actually, what, what who turned me on to it was um, a, a golf course superintendent. He's actually one of my viewers. And he said, hey, you know, you really should consider getting a soil test. You know, you do a lot of work on your lawn. 
you know, it'd be really good to, you'd be, it might be surprising what you might find out about your soil by doing that. So I started doing some research and what, what actually turned me on to my soil is a viewer sent me, there are some soil test results to look at. And I was like, man, this is really easy to understand. Like literally there's graphs and it's like low, medium, high. This is super simple. There's recommendations. I said, I need to find out more about this company. And, um, and that's when I reached out to, to Brennan and Chris and just started talking to them more about it. But Chris, there, there, you said there's some samples that um, when you were looking at mine or Alex's lawn as well that you wanted to, to review or go over. Well, I just thought Alex's lawn was a great representation of somebody who was just getting into lawn care. And, you know, maybe, you know, if we pulled up his samples and looked at, you know, what happened over time where he sure. started um, from that first sample on 611 maybe. And then, you yeah, just kind of going through it. Yeah, we'll go all the way down through um, the, the winter okay. and then compare these samples. And uh, yeah, so what so what in this sticks out to you as, as, as fairly interesting? So I guess for me, I think it, it really just represents, I guess, a term that Alan uses, which is, you know, directional data. How do we use this information to guide, you know, these decisions moving forward? And I felt like this was a great representation of the whole platform and what we do and, and how we use, you know, this information. And I guess, you know, where we started on Alex's lawn in the dark um, kind of blue or almost black looking bars represent, you know, where Alex started. And um, from that, you guys applied um, an 82412, if I remember from uh, from your video, right? So then yep. you look at the next test, yep. which is the lighter blue bar, and we see almost those exact proportions show up in the soil test, right? We can see that we applied that, we got a response, we know you know, that this is a, a good product that has good efficacy in this particular soil type. So we can kind of confirm that with this data. And again, as Alan says, you know, we're moving directional, right? Now we've moved that bar up. We've almost hit that optimal range um, sure. just after that sure. first application, right? But what I noticed was during that application, you guys did a granular, but you also came in with the Brant Supreme Green, right? And you sprayed sure. that on. And I happened to look up the label on that and you applied you know, a good percent of iron, manganese, and a little magnesium. Well, look what shows up in the test, right? We really mm -hmm. jumped those up. And just because those levels are high, that's okay. I mean, a lot of guys that are pushing dark green uh, lawns, you can be up in this high range. It's not going to really hurt. Um, anything to be in the high range on, you know, most of these nutrients. Again, just showing the sensitivity of the the test and the ability to pick up this movement over time. And again, moving in a direction, right, to, to improve, you know, turf quality. It really was interesting when we looked at, you know, what ha happened after that application, right? It looks like maybe we didn't really follow up or we didn't stay on a plan of that balanced fertilizer, like, you know, a 12-12-12 or, you know, a triple six. 16, you know, it looks like we probably should have stayed on, you know, a balanced plan, you know, for sure. as a base fertilizer sure. for the for the whole season, you know, um, every four to six weeks or so. And it really just shows us, it gives us the information for next season, right? Now we know, hey, we probably should have just stayed on this balanced base program and then still came back, you know, with those liquids or foliars to really give it that last little bit of, of pop. Yeah, absolutely. And you're absolutely right. We, it, it was it was one application of that, um, I think it was an 1824-12 that we used um, and you saw the levels come up. And something else that we did, if you notice, like the, the rightmost column is pH, right? So it began falling off and then in the fall, I'm uh, sorry, in the winter, we looked at it and we said, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to apply, um, I said, we're going to play with this a little bit. We're only going to apply calcitic lime and see if in the spring it shows up. Because we got plenty of time. We can always put down um, a dolomitic later on to bring the magnesium up then. But let's just let's see if we apply something in the, in the winter, like what happens in the spring. And if you notice, like the the rightmost bar, this one right here, mm -hmm. you see how that's reflected. And we only we put, we put down at like um, 20 pounds per thousand, so not super heavy for lime. But it was really cool to see that that change being reflected in the test because it's because pH is one of those things where depending on the soil you're dealing with, it's, it's always difficult to know. Um, if you apply, you know, X amount of product, you're gonna get, you know, what, what results you're gonna get from it. So it was really cool to see, just from us doing that light application, um, seeing the response in the in the spring test. Yeah, I didn't know that part of it. So that's really neat. I mean, we can see if we look at the pH over time, we can see, you know, kind of the more we applied nutrient um, as he kind of got into the, um, 
the turf game management game, you know, we see the pH kind of goes down because most of those products are going to have probably some acidifying effects, you know, the more we apply during the, the season. So we see that and then we see the ability based on the data to come back and kind of bump that back up. Um, and so that's a really cool, cool thing that I didn't know. Dude, this is so what we're seeing here when we look at this data, because it's done over a year here. This is, again, the, the way the test works. And I always like to try to clarify this so people know it's showing potential, meaning this is what you could potentially pull from your soil right now. That's kind of is that a layman's way to a better layman's way to explain it with like that second test where you see they applied some FERT and then I'm sure you waited several weeks or whatever to test. Yep. And you're seeing, hey, if you don't do anything, this is what you have the potential to pull out of the soil right now. Is that a, a good layman's way to explain it, Chris? Yeah, if you don't do anything, you can kind of look at your lo levels where they would be sitting if you didn't, you know, do anything or apply anything. So what's that soil providing as it sits there kind of naturally? Um, you can see the, those levels. And then again, like Alan said, we can see, you know, once we start these applications, our ability to move those numbers and hit those ranges that we've developed. Sure. But then see they drop off. Did you guys stop applying? Yes, have? exactly. So yeah, so we so what we did was so Alex was not applying. Um, he was not applying fertilizer every four to six weeks. So literally, you know, I would say, you know, we should we should do something to, to address this. We got we got an 18, 24, 12 that he applied and you, you can see the, the, the results of the of that. Um, and then he was primarily just applying malorganite. You know, he wasn't really, um, you know, he wasn't using the balanced, the balanced fertilizer that we that we went with. That's changed this year. This year, we've gone to the triple 12, actually the Yard Mastery triple 12. And uh, that's what he's going to be running this season. Him seeing this data too was really helpful because he was like, man, he's like, wow, I really need to. It's not like a one and done thing. You have to you have to continuously feed it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, kind of like you when you eat, you know, you can't just eat just once and be good for the year. You have to continually feed the grass, especially, you know, with what we're doing with the lawn where we're cutting it really short or really pushing it and expecting more out of the lawn. So you just really have to make sure that you're doing all the right things to give it the, the nutrients that it needs. And it, again, what, what these results are showing are literally right in line with what we did last year. Outside of that Brandt Supreme Green that Chris was mentioning, um, the two main micronutrients that it contains are iron and manganese. And you can see that being shown in the test. It has nothing for zinc, copper, or boron, not in any kind of meaningful amounts. And you can see in the test, those never really moved. The test definitely is picking up the activity that you are that you do to the to, to the lawn for sure it's very very cool stuff yeah and that's why i like to point out because people what i've seen i've never seen anybody do this many tests in one year but what i see them do is year over year and so what they do is they'll do a test at the beginning of the year they're like okay now i know what i need to do they go all year and they apply well then they go the next year and they test again and they're like oh well, my levels are still down I'm like well, yeah because but how did your lawn look well it looked awesome okay good so that means you had data you applied according to what the data showed you you needed. Your mm -hmm. lawn looked great. You did a good job, but it doesn't just hang in the soil all the time. Some is lost. And then also the grass itself uses some of the nutrients. And if you're bagging clippings, especially it goes away. There's a lot of reasons why, but I would just like to point out to people, this shows that you applied, you can see the levels are up, but then they don't do anything for a while. They go back down. So I always tell people, how does the lawn look? and use this as, again, directional data. When I say directional data, it's not grading you. It's not saying you did good on the first test, you did great on the second test, and you sucked on the third and the fourth. No, it just shows your direction is off. Go back right. in a different direction. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's just, it's really just another tool for making better decisions in your lawn. So Chris, so what else is new with you guys? I know that um, you guys launched that channel, Soil Lab, and I saw that there is, um, you know, some work that you guys are doing a really cool experiment I saw around soil testing where you're trying, you're using some very acidic soils and some very alkaline soils. Like, tell us a little bit about what that's about and why people should tune in on it. Yeah, I mean, the really the Soil Lab channel was really developed to really, you know, bring the why and the how behind the decisions that we make, but also back it with data so that customers can, you know, see that data if they want to, you know, dig in a little bit deeper, but really guide understanding and expectations, you know, surrounding products and the results that can be expected because when it comes to say pH you know adjusting pH this isn't an overnight thing in most soils and this will really help explain and show that you know if I go hit it with you know four to eight pounds of elemental sulfur I might not see that change for years it's a consistent thing that has to be gotcha. continued in a lot of soils or you know if I'm trying to raise soil pH some soils may have the ability to buffer pH a little bit more I mean we saw in Alex's lawn his responded pretty well you know so 
uh, that was an example of uh, a quick response, but that might not be realistic for everybody. And I guess that's the goal of, you know, some of the trials that we're running in our lab is to really, you know, back that information up with the, the data um, and just show a visual and the data of how these things work. You know, we're doing a, a zinc study where we're looking at, you know, just a zinc sulfate versus a chelated zinc um, and then some higher level chelation products and just show, you know, what, why one product may cost a little more than another and what chelation is. And then, you know, obviously the data to back that we're replicating everything we're doing um, in the lab so that we can have that replicated data and that statistical analysis to back up what we're doing. So just a lot of fun stuff that we're going to try and uh, position in a way where, you know, the DIY community can look at this and understand it, but also have that replicated data and the statistical analysis behind uh, it. Uh, we have a lawn that we're splitting where we're bagging half of the lawn. We're going to bag the clippings all year and the other <clears throat> the other half we're going to mulch all year and we're nice. going to test monthly nice. and we're going to show you guys the data, what that looks like. Just all sorts of neat things that we think uh, bring a lot of value to the DIY community and help guide, you know, the decisions that we make every day. Alan, what about you? Anything anything interesting new that you want to share with the uh, community before we close out? Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, the biggest thing, our app just, we just rolled out a huge update in the app. So cleared out some bugs that we were having. Um, but the biggest thing is now lawn measuring is in there. You can measure your lawn oh, as nice. well as now you can import all your soil data from the yard mastery test, which the guys at Predictive Nutrient Solutions uh, do for us. And uh, from there, we're going to continue moving on. So eventually it will inform the program. Currently, it, those two pieces of data don't change the program at all, but that's the next piece. Mm -hmm. So that based on your lawn size and your soil test, now you get a real custom program. I mean, really custom. So that's what we're going towards next. That's a pretty big lift and it'll take a little bit of time, but we're getting there. Awesome, guys. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for making taking the time. This was, it was difficult to pull together to get, you know, you know, giants in the community. One, you know, the, the godfather of yeah. YouTube lawn care. And you know, you know, now the the, the godfather of, of uh, DIY soil testing. Thank you guys so much for making the time to help educate the community and help everyone understand why soil testing is important and why it's something they should incorporate into their uh, their lawn care program. Guys, um, be sure to check out uh, you know the Yard Mastery website. Be sure to check out the app if you guys don't have it as yet. Definitely go over to the Soil Lab channel and and uh, and check that out. I mean, I do like content every now and then on soil testing, but literally you have someone that actually knows what they're doing, is an expert on it, that's going to be doing some real really cool research that you guys should follow. And, it's, and the thing is that that's nice is that it's it's it's, it's distilled and, ex, and explained in a way that anybody can understand. That's the thing about it that I really like. I won't send you guys over there to just to, if, you, if we're going to confuse you. Like the data is really, really done. It's really well presented. And you guys, and you guys get a lot of value out of it. So awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys next time. Have an amazing day.